Good evening and welcome to the gymnasium at Milford High School. Filling in for Tim Kawa tonight, I'm Patrick Garfi alongside Neil Nariesman here to bring you Milford TV's coverage of Milford High School Athletics. Tonight's matchup brings the Cannon Bulldogs to town and a key tilt for the Scarlet Hawks. Presently, tonight is a tale of teams going in opposite directions. Milford comes into this one on a four game losing streak with a record of four and eight in league play and a record of six and nine overall. Canton, meanwhile, enters the contest on a four game winning streak and are atop the Davenport division at an impressive 10 and two in division play and 13 and two overall. They've also been stingy on defense allowing an average of just 50 points per game, six points better than what the Hawks have averaged. Milford needs to win four out of six of the next six games in order to qualify for this year's tournament and they try to take a big first step in that mission tonight. It's the Bulldogs and the Scarlet Hawks coming up next on Milford TV. And welcome back to Milford, ladies and gentlemen. Again, Patrick Garropy here tonight filling in for Tim Coet. And alongside is Neilan Reisman, who will bring into the broadcast right now. Neilan, let's talk about tonight's matchup and what the Hawks need to do to start uh, changing their fortunes here, coming in with a four-game losing streak against a team who's in the opposite direction with a four-game winning streak. Yeah, Milford definitely on a little bit of a slide right now, looking to try to change that tonight. And I think that there's always opportunity to change the momentum and flow. Last time they were here against Attleboro, they had a chance to pull it off, uh, let Attleboro come back and ended up losing by a large amount. But I think today is gonna be a little bit of a different story. Canton on a four game win streak and Milford maybe has the mindset of going in and trying to end that right away. You gotta think that they're hungry coming into this one tonight and imagine that getting off to a good start is key. This one is underway here with the ball in the hands of Devin Foster. Being guarded closely by Brendan White. And again, what's pretty much a must win for Milford. Cut inside here and two points there for Tony Harris. And a quick turnover by Brendan White. It seemed like he stepped over the inbounds line. Well, a sloppy play there. Yeah, tough start for Milford, the exact opposite, but still lots of time left, obviously, as this one's just gotten started. But back in the hands of the Bulldogs. One of the more dominant teams laid up there and grabbed. Now turned over, back the other way comes Milford. Brendan White handling the ball over midcourt. Dish off to Feroli. Feroli looking inside for Kelly. Kelly loses the handle on it, stripped. And coming up with it now is Harris who hands off to Foster. Led up ahead. Sent into the corner. Ball moving around the perimeter here. Foster gives back. Handled by Varil. Varil being watched closely by Falcon. Oh, near pick off there for Brendan White, but just missed it. Shot clock winding down at five seconds. And trying to get a shot off and nailing it. Ice, Paul Corcoran. Hard defense right there, doesn't pay off. Tough break for Milford, Neil, in there, absolutely. But here they are trying to get their first points of the game. Frioli hands to Falcon, a deep three. Off the mark, it comes up a little bit short there. Rebound for the Bulldogs. Falcon getting his first start tonight at, for Milford. You gotta imagine he wants to make something of it. Yeah, you gotta be going through him right now. He's probably got a lot going through his head. And yeah, turnover there. Trying to find his man with Harris. But a little bit of off the mark. And turn back over to Milford here. Kelly with the inbounds. Definitely one of the things Milford's got to look forward to in trying to pull off this victory is trying to be able to shut down Devin Foster and Tony Harris. Devin Foster averaging 17.5 points a game and Tony Harris right behind him averaging 15.7. Combined 32 points out of the 58. Pretty deadly combo. Tomorrow missed his three point attempt on the last trip up court but Milford back with it again. White trying to get a handle on the ball. Finds tomorrow in the corner, lets up a three. In and out. Rebounded by Devin Foster. Beautiful shot by tomorrow, unable to get it going, but Milford so far almost reaching the five minute mark, hasn't put a point up on the board. Not what they needed at this moment, but fortunately, still pretty much within check. Only a five point game early on here. Now working back down low, kicking back out to the perimeter. Foster's three point comes up short, rebound to Falcon. Tomorrow leads up for White. White on a fast break, try to get around his defender. 
goes up for the layup and just misses. More shots continuing not to fall. Foster again coming back with it. And another turnover here, but it's hot potato. Back comes Canton. Dribbling along the baseline here. Kick around the perimeter. Deep three-pointer for Harris. No good. Falcon trying to stay with it on the floor. Oh, it's a tough break there. Ends up going down, turned over. Harris in, nails it for two. Good aggressive play there. Canton showing why they're on top of the division. 7-0 run to start the game. Looking pretty dangerous and locked in early on. Kelly over to Falcon. Falcon driving in the lane, throws him up way off the mark. Now looks like they're just trying to force up some shots here. Back the other way comes Canton. Quick handoff back to Maffey. Now ball in the hands of Burrill. Foster looking for his options. Two men watching him. Gets the ball back, feeds it down low. Outside chance for passed up. Good ball movement right now by the Bulldogs, but a turnover and good patience by Milford. Continuous passes by Canton, getting a little bit of ri little risky right there. Just a little bit. White surveying as tomorrow. Down low for Oli, and he gets fouled on the shot. Trying to take use of that size advantage right there, able to body him up, get the foul call, and Milford having a chance to put up their first points in the quarter. And it seems like that might be the best way to go at this point, is get your ball down low to the bigs and see if they can create any kind of havoc down there, or at least get themselves to the line. Whatever, put point, whatever puts points up on the boards, they take it. Speaking of points, there's the first one of the night. We're only one for one. Coming a little bit under the halfway point of the first quarter. Yeah, a little too hard on that one, but rebound to Kelly. Back to Froli. Froli dishes inside and just can't get it to go. And another foul here. Draws another one. Playing very regressive on the offensive rebounds. Caden Kelly able to get an offensive rebound. Right back to Andrew Frioli trying to put up a putback and get his third and fourth attempt at the free throw line. Important potential swing here for Milford, but they need to capitalize on these free throws. Ref having a word. Right now with Tony Harris. Seems like Harris might have gotten hit in the mouth. Looks like he's checking out of this one for now. And coming into the game is Matt Warburton. Don't have an exact listing on him, but he's a pretty sizable kid. Canton with some pretty decent size all around. They definitely have the supporting cast for a 13-2 record. And makes that one as well. So 7-3. Four-point game, 3.45 to go here in the first quarter. And Canton's hot start has been temporarily halted, but we'll see what they come up with here. On the outside, Corcoran, Warburton, Burrill, Will fake with the head. Give him back, driving inside off the side of the backboard. Not a good looking shot there. And Ferroli comes down with it. Brandon White calling out some signals. Directing Kelly toward him as he gets in the ball. Tomorrow to a cut in Ferroli. Ferroli try again and draws another foul. Nearly gets one. Oh, he's got to get called actually on that one. Offensive. They're going to give him a travel car yep. right, call right there using his opposite foot instead of the pivot. Still good to see out of him coming into this one aggressive. You know, not typically starting games, but he looks hungry to prove what he's worth. Yeah, he's trying to take command of the floor right now. Put Milford back into this game, and he's definitely, other than that turnover, he's definitely showing why he can do that. They need his size tonight to be a presence on the defensive end and apparently on the offense, too. Milford fans getting really rowdy, and it's going to be a turnover on Canton, trying to push up the floor. Denied there. White coming back up now, calling out. Driving in and going down hard. Ball will still be Milford's possession. Looks like he knew what he was doing right up until the last second. Quick substitution as Kyle Fitzgerald comes in for Paul Cochran. Canton trying to keep some fresh legs out there. Milford staying with what they got. Falcon lets up a quick three. 
And short rimmed on that one. 0 for 3 so far from Falcon. And a drive to the bucket there, but just coming up short was Devin Foster. Falcon back with it. Gives to White tomorrow. They're really forcing up threes right now. Another short one there. Kelly almost able to get that offensive rebound, but it seems like Foster gets in front of that. Yeah, you gotta imagine Milford needs to slow down the pace of this thing. I mean, it's still only a four point game, but lots of time left in this one. They look like they're rushing things as we get a whistle here. Joe DeMarcus stands at the scores table. Looks like he's gonna be coming out for Cam Falcon. Let's see what he can provide to this game. Well, actually, what we got here? Oh, you're right. And a free throw hit. And as noted, DeMarco checks in the game. Tomorrow's out, and actually Falcon remains in. And another substitution here. Coming back into the game is Tony Harris, and Warburton checks back out. Eight to three, opportunity to make it nine. The back rimmed, but offensive rebound put up and missed. Back the other way comes White. Under two minutes to go in the first quarter to Marco. Risky pass there. Inside to Kelly, another risky one. This time he gets stolen away by Foster. Looked like Kelly was about to pull through down on that post and Foster takes it out of his hands. They're gonna give a travel call on Canton right there. Fortunate call there for Milford. Just needs to slow the game down a little bit more, you'd think. Seems like the troubles for both teams tonight have been turnovers. Really trying to play at a fast pace tonight. Oh, tough handle there for Falcons. He just loses control of the ball. It almost looked like it just got caught in his hand and two points off the turnover there. Canton coming out with a full court press. Seems to be a 1-2-2. Two, two. You gotta imagine for Milford, this game has the feel of a playoff game for them. Falcon, another one gets missed. Well, not only is it a playoff game, but this is definitely a playoff team. Like you said, Patrick, already in the playoffs with a 13-2 and two record. And if Milford's going to make it to the playoffs, this is kind of the caliber team that they'll be playing against. Yeah, good. Uh, certainly a good warm-up. <laughs> All the more a necessary winning opportunity for them. As we said, needing to win four out of their final six games. And uh, this doesn't leave uh, too much leeway for them. Canton with the ball. Harris hands off to Foster. These guys have been playing off one another tonight. Three point attempt nailed. Tony Harris. Joey Everett checked into the game. Milford trying to go with a little bit of a size lineup right now. They could really use Frioli back to White. White needs to hit this one. Can't. Everett trying to come up with a rebound. But he's unable to. Foster back up the other way around his man. Foster driving into the basket. Back rim gets a rebound. Can't hit that one either. Rebounds Marco, 28 seconds to go. And right there, that showed off Foster's athleticism, <laughs> athleticism and versatility, able to stay on, stay up in the air on that offensive rebound and put back, just unable to get it to fall through. With double team there. White had the ball stripped right away from him by Austin Maffey. What a play there. White got a double team that he never saw coming. End up giving a foul call to Milford. Cam's gonna take this ball out. Not the start that the Hawks envisioned. Down 13 to three, and there are only points coming from the free throw line to this point. Canton's been challenging defensively. Foster picks this one up. This clock ticks to 10 seconds. They look to get a few more points and put Milford a little further behind here. Around the perimeter, three-point attempt for Harris, no good. At the buzzer, that one's gonna be well short. And that'll do it for the first quarter of play. Milford coming out slow out of the gates, and they trail by 10 in this one, 13 to three. We'll be back with second quarter action after this on Milford TV. And welcome back, we're set for second quarter action here in Milford. Again, Patrick Garropy filling in for Tim Coet alongside Neil and Reisman. And Milford trailing currently by 10 points, 13 to three in what was a really tough offensive quarter for them. And now come out with a little bit more size in the lineup here in the second, leading off with Everett, Caden Kelly, Brendan White, Andrew Frioli, 
And uh, their only undersized player, DeMarco. Harris getting the rebound and block right off of that. Canton feeling it here. Trying to work inside, Faroli needs to put up a shot. He does this, way off the mark, doesn't even touch the backboard, or rather the rim. And back the other way comes Canton. Start of the second quarter, Milford still yet to hit a field goal. Driving in there with Harris, unable to get that one to fall. White trying to get past his man, gets stood up. It's over to Faroli. Faroli, dangerous pass inside to Kelly, who gets an easy two. That's a bullet pass from Frioli right there, able to connect to Kelly, and that puts up their first field goal of the game for Milford, making it five to 13. And they gotta be sure of their passes, and <laughs> the receivers gotta be ready to take him in, the guys gotta be ready to drill him with a pass because Cannon is looking to take everything that they can as they get another two there. And lack of turnovers will definitely help, and Milford trying to pull themselves back together in the second quarter. Really tight defense, DeMarco almost loses it out of bounds there, and this time it is lost. Harris comes up with it, gets to Foster. Foster pushed the ball up ahead. There, Fitzgerald has it in the corner. Back to Harris. Brendan Saylor at the scorer's table getting ready to check in for the first time tonight. Burrill looking inside for Foster. Instead gets to Harris. Harris, another three-point attempt. Rims out. And Milford fortunate that keep missing shots. But then again, turnovers are hurting him right now as DeMarco has, sees that ball fly over his head and out of bounds. We're gonna take out Joe DeMarco for the first time tonight. Tough foray into the game for him. Said Brendan Saylor has now entered in. And in the struggling first quarter for Milford, it wasn't that they couldn't get uh, shots, they were just missing a lot of their shots. Had a lot of three-pointer attempts, couldn't make a field goal for the whole first quarter. Up until Caden Kelly making his layup on the post. But uh, it's definitely been a lot of struggling for Milford, and that's one of their major problems during their skid and even their entire season is their inconsistency to play through all four quarters of the game. Good to note there as Cannon gets the ball back in now. Foster plays to the corner, back to him, over to Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald looking down low, has man, and picked off there by Saylor. Well, extra enthusiasm and good playmaking ability there from Saylor, but he gets stripped, and they're gonna call a foul. Give that foul to Captain Matthew right there. He thought he got all ball, but quickly conceded the argument. Seemed like he reached over a little bit on Saylor, a little armed arm action, and good call. Saylor. I had no one to go to right now, having trouble, and he's gonna get called for a travel. Give a five second violation, Kyle Fitzgerald right there playing beautiful defense, and Milford's gonna call a timeout right there, but Ken with all the answers right now, Milford trying to find adjustments, and so far, not so good. Well, they'll try to find those adjustments right now in the huddle from the sidelines. We take a quick break here on Milford TV. And yeah, welcome back to Milford. 15 to five, your score in favor of the Cannon Bulldogs. Coming to this one, playing some really, really tight defense. Only allowing one field goal so far with five minutes to go in the half. Well, so far, so good for Milford on the defensive end too, only two points so far. Big denial there from Harris, goes right into the hands of Milford. Everett forced up a shot, can't get it to go. Kelly inside, gets two. Way to stick with it. And that is definitely one of the edges that Milford has had against every team, whether they've been playing on the road or home, is their offensive re rebounding from their big men. Caden Kelly, uh, master of his craft at rebounding. And right there, Saylor with the steal. And nice pick, and gets two off the turnover. Some points that Milford could desperately use as they try to get a little momentum back on their side and make this thing a game again. They've kept... Canton down pretty well, all things considered. 15 points is not that much for this point of the game. A little bit of a 6-0 quarter run right now. Harris trying to snap that, but he'll miss. Frioli with the rebound. And back the other way comes Milford. Saylor calling out signals. Looking to cut in the lead a little more. Kelly outside driving in. Forces one up, doesn't even hit the rim though. A little too hard on that one. He went through about three or four defenders. 
And Fitzgerald along the baseline. Hands back out, Harris. Harris gets stripped by Saylor. And they're gonna call that foul on Harris. Oh, and Harris. Some words for Saylor, who's playing aggressive, and I'm not really sure what he's going after here. Crowd's going wild. Saylor playing beautiful defense, little pickpocket action, and looks like that's gonna be a little bit of frustration from Harris. Absolutely, Saylor, ever since he's come into this game, has been a spark for them being an agitator on defense and starting to get them rolling on offense finally too. And it's get, helping so far. Getting under the skin of a key player too, Tony Harris, who's been getting some good looks tonight. He has buried some, but he's also missed a whole bunch too. Yeah, he's been not afraid to shoot. and Hasn't really paid off so far. A lot of deep three-pointers, unable to get in. They've been close, but just not falling for Harris. And that may even help with his frustration. But, uh, and Harris really appears to be kind of an aggressive player as well, and you can see it in his defense. So I think the fact that somebody is trying to stand up toe-to-toe -to -toe with him is really throwing him off a little bit. And he's trying to say that he's not afraid of that challenge. Oh, he's a talented kid. And with a talent, he's got the mindset that he does not want to be challenged by anyone. He wants to be better than anyone else on the court. Yeah, he's certainly not going to back down. Tomorrow with the ball here, risky pass inside, but taken by Kelly. And they're going to call him. A lot of travel cars, <laughs> calls for Milford. Something that they really need to clean up if they want to continue to get back into this one, which is still only a six point game somehow. 15 to nine with three minutes to go in the half. We got a defensive barn burner here. Yeah, Ken has definitely been struggling on offense. A lot of sloppy play considering turnovers and definitely unnecessary shots. And Milford's definitely starting to take advantage and find their way through this game. Another three from Harris, that one completely misses. As the crowd lets him know that one. Saylor loses the handle on the ball, gets it back. Tries to force out a pass and gets turned over. Foster looking for Harris, he's got him. In for two. Tomorrow trying to take the charge, unable to get the call. Good tandem work off of the turnover for the Bulldogs. Saylor now being double teamed. Finds Feroli, Feroli into the corner forever, Everett. He gets Scott Kelly for early, trying to work down low against two defenders, goes up and draws a foul. This is gonna be his third appearance tonight at the free throw line, three for four so far. Leading the way in that charge, getting there alone. And we'll see if he can try and get this one back down to six points. Matthew standing at the scores table for Ken. And can't hit the first one. But we'll still try to bring Milford to double digits finally here. And both of them missed there. Rebounded to the Bulldogs as Foster takes it back up. Foster's got his man in the corner. It's for real, for real over to Harris. Ball batted up in the air, and that one should be maintained possession for Canton. Nice tip by Kelly right there as Falcon's gonna come in the game for tomorrow. Falcon a lethal shooter when he's hot. A little bit of two a little bit over two minutes to go, and if they can get him started, definitely help. And Falcon again, he, he's also a spark plug for this team, but you gotta imagine he's a bit of a defensive mismatch here against the size of this Cannon Bulldogs team. Feroli, nice kick to himself. Finds Falcon. Falcon gets the ball back to Saylor, looks back to his bench. See what to do here. Feroli, over to Saylor, he fakes. Shot clock winding down, Milford's gonna have to force up a shot. Kelly for three, nails it. I think they're gonna give that a Two Might have been a foot on the line there. It was close. Either way, big points here. Now looking to respond, <laughs> he does. Devin Foster, 22 to 11, now doubling up the lead, putting him at 11 now. As the offense starts to open up a little bit in this one, as we take to under a minute 30. Clean look there, just a little too much though for Saylor, and back comes Viril. Mufford still yet to hit a three-pointer so far in this game. Not feeling it yet, but hopefully maybe some halftime adjustments and 
talk from the coach will help get them back in it. But in the meantime, they're not really out of it. Only 11 point game, a three point attempt, trying to draw a foul is Harris, not gonna happen. And guess who but Saylor being the one knocking him down. Falcon lets up a three and drills it. In the contact, arm in his, hand, arm in his face and beautiful shot. And that's why he's starting tonight. He is a lethal shooter. And that's what they expect of him. 22-14 the score at 46 seconds to go. We'll back, be back right after this timeout. And yeah, welcome back to Milford. Eight point game here, 46 seconds to go as Canton has the ball. Looking to get their lead back up to double digits. And what has been a slow starting offensive game is picked up here in the recent moments. 14 seconds on the shot clock, being worked around, turned over. Shot clock now turned off. Milford's gonna look for this last shot opportunity. Matt Nickerson in the game. It's a pass over to Kelly. Kelly goes cross court to Falcon with a bullet pass. Now Faroli over Nickerson. Nickerson telling Falcon where to go. He gets in his spot. Falcon driving, peels back, takes a shot. That one comes up short. And last attempt here at the buzzer, also short from Austin Maffey. And that will do it. A low scoring first half at 22 to 14 as the teams head to their locker rooms to make halftime adjustments. We'll take a break as well and come back with second half action after this. Here's current score, 22 to 14 in favor of Canton. but come on a little bit since then and can off to a good start here as Devin Foster takes it to the bucket for two. Put in a couple substitutions to start off this second quarter. White's in, Nickerson's gonna stay in. But a quick turnover on Milford right there is gonna have a chance for Ken to push their lead up to 12 points. And another bad start. <laughs> Not what Milford needed, but again, we reiterate, still plenty of time in this one. But they're gonna have to continue to play some good defense here. And they definitely played a much better second quarter, able to put up 11 points towards Canton's nine. Rebound to Nickerson here. Nickerson looking aggressive in his play so far tonight. Faroli into the corner for Caden Kelly, goes cross court. Tomorrow has an open look for three, and he nails it. First points by Milford right there. First three-pointer of the game right there for Milford as well. Yep. Couldn't have come sooner. 24-17 <laughs> in a seven-point game now. Ball tipped out of bounds and still be Cannon's ball. As the gym here starts to come back to life again. Things were quiet for a while. It got loud in the second. And we hope to see a little bit more of that in the second half. Now Fitzgerald with the ball as he takes it from Tony Harris. Burrill back to Fitzgerald. Foster over to Harris in the corner. Now to Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald keys up a three and he drills it going to the bank. And that 2-3 zone fell apart right there. Tomorrow pulling back towards a little bit of the corner and unable to watch the man up top. Nickerson cross court and just sailing a little too high on tomorrow. That one goes off its hands and it's another turnover for Milford. 10 point game here. Ball back in the hands of Foster. He pushes off to Fitzgerald. Milford still relying heavily on that 2-3 zone. And it's paid off so far, only 27 points allowed from Canton. Yeah, for the most part it's worked, but they've got, haven't been able to answer with their own bucket, so it's been the problem it seems. Fitzgerald to Vareal down low. Harris along the baseline finds Foster. Foster in low. Vareal. And a, two points there. What a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful pass by Vareal right there. Able to slide that right down to the post and low block for Harris to put that up easily. Faroli gets a look down low. Tries to go off glass. Can't rebound to Kelly. He's got it. 
now we start to get a little bit more offense and flow into this one. Fitzgerald hands off to Foster. Foster to Viril to Maffey in the corner. Maffey across to Fitzgerald, now over to Harris. Back across to Maffey, Maffey to Viril. Harris looks for a three here. He knew he didn't have that one right away as he immediately started to chase the rebound. And Milford comes back the other way. Sutherland and Sailor scorers table. Getting ready to check in. They could use uh, some more of Sailor's energy in this one. Uh, kick ball there, it goes off of Kelly, but still managed to maintain possession as it goes to tomorrow. 10 seconds in the shot clock. Nickerson right. trying to push it, trying to get some support. Driving inside, lays up a floater, goes off the back rim. And back the other way comes the Bulldogs. Not a bad shot. Foster up against White. Looking to maybe set a pick here. Said it likes to go the other way. And we'll get a call against Milford, it looks like. Not too many fouls going on in this game. And yeah, ball will be inbounded here. Kicked into the corner, three-point attempt. Sails high and over the basket. And a foul to Fitzgerald there as he'll go with the line. I don't know how Fitzgerald was able to come through with that one. Seemed like Sutherland. Kelly and tomorrow right around him. Milford needs some misses here and they get the first one. Joey Everett checking into the game for Brendan White. A lot of quick substitutions for Milford so far. They're just trying to find a lineup that might work with them for this third quarter. Trying to find wherever can finally work. It's been a tough one tonight, but they've done a good job overall. This needs to start clicking on offense, like we've been saying. Sailor now. Across midcourt, being watched closely. Everett finds Kelly. And down low, we get a call against Canton here. Matthew picking that one up. And like you said, Patrick, defense has definitely helped Milford stay into this game, but they can't let their guard down, because Mil Canton's averaging around almost 60 points a game. And it was the same with Attleboro. They could play good defense so far, but the second that they slip up and allow a few easy baskets and Canton has a chance to pull away, they're not gonna have a chance of coming back. Yeah, it's quick momentum, and it's good teams like Canton have the ability to bury you in a hurry. They're 13 and two for a reason. Absolutely. Sailor with the ball now. Takes a pass, finds tomorrow in the corner. Tomorrow finds Everett, Everett cutting in, goes a little too hard off the glass there, nothing doing. Able to take his time on that layup, and forces it up a little bit, bouncing right off the backboard and avoiding the rim. Foster with good patience in the backboard after initially being double teamed, looks them both off. For real, in low, can't get the runner to go there. Tomorrow looking to spot a quick three, he does so. Now starting to feel it. Eight point game once again. Milford's got to take a timeout here in Solo Lee. 30 to 22 now in favor of Canton. We'll be right back here on Milford TV. And welcome back as the teams take the court here with 3.13 to go in the third. Milford trying to stir up a comeback right now as they've been trailing all night. Currently down by eight and starting to find a little bit more of an offensive rhythm as this game has gone along. And they're coming out in press formation right now. Able to put up eight points so far in this third quarter, and a lot of that's come from Zach tomorrow. Two quick threes in the other basket coming off of Caden Kelly's putback. Sailor back in the game being aggressive, <laughs> and two defenders coming up, forcing an air ball there from Devin Foster. A lot of Canton air balls. And that play, it's got to remain with Milford there. Tight, tight quarters there being worked on, double team. And Fortune has come away with the ball. Sailor will inbound. Seemed like no one from Canton wanted that pass right there. They're playing a little bit of sideline catch. Sailor drills it. No Five points. Chipping away that lead.
Fitzgerald finding Harris at the top of the key. Fitzgerald again with it, he drives in, looking for options. Gallery has it picked off, Everett, he's got White with him, Everett's got to take it himself, and can't get it to go, White the rebound, and he might have gotten fouled on that one. Seemed like Everett was dribbling with his head down right there, had White open on an outlet pass. Try to take that to himself and ends up missing, causing an inbounds play for Milford. Seemed like it might have been an off ball or off shot foul. A few substitutions for Canton. They're trying to find a lineup to work with him right now as this third quarter is not going their way. Everett made a good move there too, looking, trying to sell the pass, but just couldn't finish things off. Now ball into the backcourt, collected by White. And back they come. Coach Sheever barking out orders to his team. Saylor posts up for three, can't hit though. Nice drive there, but unable to come away with it. And holding the back of his head is Harris. No calls though. And play continues on here with 1.38 to go. Again, a five point game now. Smallest deficit's been since the first quarter. Deep three for Everett. Not doing there. Caden Kelly's checking in. Foster kicks out to the three point line, now gets into the other corner. Fake the shot. For real. In and out. Milford still in this one, continuing to challenge the Bulldogs. And they need to just find their good quality shots right now. Frioli trying to get that call down in the post for real. A lot of size difference right there. Oh, and a nice move there by Saylor to get to the rim. What a 180 reverse right there. Nice finish with the opposite hand and pays off perfectly as Milford cuts the lead down to three. A one possession game here as we approach the end of the third quarter. And right now Canton in some damage control. After being up by, I believe as many as 11 or 12. Three point attempt, no good there. Rebound to Everett. Harris still with no answers from deep. Milford able to keep him check on that 2-3 zone right there. A big opportunity here. Milford try to take some more time off the clock and bleed it down more as they continue to try and seize momentum. Everett in the corner, puts one up. No good off the back glass, and that will do it for the end of the third quarter. Milford continues to chip away here, and now got it down to a three-point game. 30 to 27 in favor of Ken. We'll be right back for fourth quarter action after this. And welcome back for the final eight minutes of play here in what's become a tight game at 30 to 27. Canton leading all night. Milford slowly trying to chip away at the top team in their division. And right now, have it as a one possession game inside to White. One point game. Sailor trusting White on that back cut. And that could have been any more of a beautifully placed pass as Saley's gonna try to take a three pointer and off the side of the hoop. Just a little too hard there, but Milford coming up with a big turn over here. Fairly inside, they've got the lead. Ken calling a timeout, and Milford is going crazy here. We'll, we're gonna stick here with this one. Keep going, Neilan. 4 0 run in that 23 second span, a quick turnover. Wade able to keep, come off with that catch. And, and now they're starting to feel some confidence. Oh, that was a beautiful start off to the quarter. Sailor making a nice quick bounce pass to White off the clean backboard finish. And Sailor's impact in this game can't be uh, overstated enough here. I mean, he's been the, the spark plug for Milford tonight on both ends of the floor, being an agitator on defense and a facilitator on offense. He is what I'd like to call a hybrid. He can play offense, he can shoot, but at the same time, he can get back on the court and play defense, and it's paid off. A few good steals able to change the drive and give Milford a 31 to 30 lead in a very low scoring game. Milford Swiss Army Knife tonight, doing it all for them. Canton with the inbound, trailing for the first time tonight. And feeling some pressure. We'll see how they can handle this adversity here. 
Good fake on the pass there. Saylor tries to stick with it. Watching his men like a hawk. Down low inside Harris. Quick shot. He nails it. And that's definitely his first points in a while. Back on top now by one. And we begin to play maybe the lead change game here. Milford's coaching staff barking out to the players, giving direction. Sailor with the ball, and he's going to get called for a travel. Oh, another tough one called there. Now here's the thing for Milford, and I've said it plenty of times before, their consistency in games. Now they don't really, they're not a team that can play all four quarters. They slumped off in a little bit in the first, but they second and third quarter, and even the start of the fourth, have been perfect for them. Can now they finish strong, though? Like you said, Patrick, it's going to be a game of finishing. If they can hold through for these next six and a half minutes, they definitely deserve this victory. They've got a shot. Shot comes up short there. White with the ball. Might have just thrown it away, though. And that one staying with Milford. Fortunate there. Disapproval on the Canton side, but it seemed like it might have gone off the leg of Foster right there. Gives Milford a chance to take their lead back. Ruffs had a good angle at it for sure. Sailor to tomorrow with his team down by one as they have fought and clawed their way back into this one. Bounce pass to White. White risky pass picked off by Foster. Foster gets tripped from oh. behind. By Sailor and clearly accidental there. It looks like he might have just stepped on the back of his shoe really. I think he might have actually tangled his feet right there. I think Sailor definitely came in perfect timing with that trip, but might have been a little bit of a missed call right there as Foster might have tangled his feet and fell to the floor by himself. It did seem incidental, but definitely some contact there, but you can't do anything about it, and that's the call, so Milford will go with it. No easy points given up, though. Real the Foster. Falcon at the scorer's table, and speaking of shooters. That can help get them back in front. Ball batted up in the air, caught by Maffey. Amazing coming down with that one, for real. Gang double team in the corner, watched by Tamaro. Finds Maffey, Maffey gets the shot off. Too hard, rebound, goes to White. Suffocating on that zone right there. Sailor cutting in, gets triple team tomorrow. Cross court. As White, White back over to Sailor. Playing a game of catch right now. Sailor looks off the pass, gives back to White. Now inside, going with it, and for two. Caden Kelly. Canton looking to answer right back here. Outside three-point attempt for Foster. He drills it. Ice in his veins. Devin Foster gives Canton back the two-point lead. And he is Canton's go-to guy. Leading scorer, been perfect from the field tonight. Really tenacious out there playing on both ends of the floor and pushing things. You can tell he's definitely a commanding leader of the Bulldog squad. But still lots of time to go in this one. 5.07 to go. And lots of opportunity here. Milford's got to be able to see that. They have the win right in front of them. It's just about making a few extra stops now and continuing to feel it on offense like they've been feeling it. That's anyone's game. A little bit of five minutes to go. It'll be interesting to see what kind of lineup Milford comes out with, whether they try to stay big or go small with their quickness as they get more confident. Before the timeout, Kim Falcon was getting ready to check in. And we'll see where he slots into this. Now it looks like Everett might be resting. So Brendan White, Sailor, Falcon, Kelly, and tomorrow all on the floor. Can't encountering with Vareel, Harris. Maffey, Warburton, and their leader, Foster. Ken going with a little bit of an extended 2-3 zone, pulling that guy from the middle, but 
almost. Kate and Kelly just a little too hard off the back rim, nearly had the game tied there. Tough break, and Milford needs to stop now. Foul can be given the assignment right now of watching Foster. Because he switches off. Not really letting anybody inside Foster. Three point attempt way off the mark. Rebound offense. And White's got to get called for the foul. Yep. That's got to put Canton at the line. And if you're Milford again, hoping for some misses here. Matt Warburton at the line. Coming off the bench, sinks a big first free throw. Fans trying to do whatever they can to cause the distraction. Second free throw up and good. Four point game now. Still lots of time, and Milford just needs to take that time. Sailor. Over the head of Foster, loops into White. White back over to Sailor. And Sailor goes to the corner, putting up a three and drilling it. Zach Tamara has been feeling in the second half from beyond the perimeter. Three three pointers for Sailor almost coming with a turn over there. Some defensive pressure being on the rebounds pass for Canton. And they're going to take Cam Falcon out, try to get some size. Foster ahead to Harris. Harris, a one-on-one -on -one matchup there. Turned over to Froley. Froley dribbling, but it has a man all over him. Gets the ball right back. Sailor has tomorrow in the corner. Tomorrow's got to try to put up for three for the lead. Can't hit it. White with the offensive rebound, puts it up. He misses Frioli with the rebound, and he's got it for the end one. And there we go. Tie game. Or rather, give him the lead. They did not give up on that play at all. Milford desperately trying to get a big win here tonight to set them up for what will hopefully be a big run to end the season, but they need to finish strong tonight. Farrell hits the free throw. Three point play there converted. Foster trying to get past White as this game is intensifying now as we tick at 3.30 to go in the fourth quarter. Maffey has the ball back. Swinging around on the perimeter in the corner. Harris trying to, and they're gonna give that a three-point foul. Ooh. Seems like that's gonna be on tomorrow. Now that's a tough foul to take there. I mean, fortunately, you've got a two-point lead here, but you send one of their best players to the line in Tony Harris, and we'll see how he responds here. Nails the first one. We get some substitutions here. Or actually, they called back that substitution. Didn't allow it. And second one not missed. Now they'll let him in. The Milford team's getting what they want with that second missed free throw. Maffey take a seat and Fitzgerald into the game. Give some fresh legs for Cannon as the crowd picks up here. Another miss and Milford contains the lead. 39-38. Taylor has his man, it's White. Kelly down low, risky pass, gets in. Frilly draws the foul. He's got to get back to the line. He has been quite a key contributor for the Hawks tonight. And that free throw line has been his best friend throughout the entire game. Canton really struggling to contain him on the offensive end of the floor. Whenever they put it down low to him, he's been making some power moves and forcing fouls. And he's been very effective down low tonight, along with Caden Kelly. Back comes the first free throw. The teammates give him some reassurances and tell him to go after the next one. And in a close game like this, you can't be missing your free throws with such little time on the clock. Only a one-point lead. Second one, drills. Two-point game with about three minutes to go here. And they're gonna call a push foul on White right there over the Knock Foster right in the back. Is 
So I'll take it again, Foster up to Harris, and now back to Foster. Joe, Joey Everett now at the scorer's table. A little bit under three minutes to go. Fitzgerald trying to get the ball back in Foster's hands, he does. Three point attempt, line drive, hits off the front rim. Offensive rebound though. Verrill's able to pull that away, but goes off Kelly and Kane's gonna keep possession. White's gonna be taken out for Joey Everett. Quiet game for White tonight, not much doing. Foster now. I'm gonna see what the best way is gonna be here. Bounce pass over to Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald to the corner. Now drive is Varil. Varil gets denied by Frioli and kept in bounds. Milford's ball. 2.20 to go now, Everett. Beautiful save uh, from Everett right off of that play. Sailor, quick pass over to Kelly. Kelly finds Frioli. Doesn't spot tomorrow. Goes to the corner, Kelly. Inside Frioli, he's got another two. Make that a two possession game for Milford. 42 to 38, they have turned this game around. Just watch out for a Canton answer. And Three point attempt, no good there. Come down with this for Oli. Sailor, try to get past the man. And draws the foul. Grill seeming very aggressive on that. Doesn't get the call he wants as he smacks the floor. Two fouls away from the one and one for Canton. One and one foul away from Milford to Canton's in the one and one. Nice. Brendan White's gonna check back in the game for Everett and his door for Canton starting to close a little bit. Milford can taste it, but still lots of time to go here. 145 and just a four point game. This thing's can swing fast. Never let your guard down because the next second, next thing you know, Canton might have that lead back. Oh, good defense there by Burrell. He gets the turnover and calls a timeout. And they pick up the intensity on defense. They can sense that they're about to be uh, upset here, and they don't want any of that. They take a timeout, and so will we with 1.38 to go in the game. Four point lead for Milford at 42 to 38. And welcome back for the final minute 38 of regulation play here. Milford has fought their way back into this one to take the lead against the top team in their division, Canton. And looking to pull off a big upset here as they are a team desperate for wins as they approach the tournament time. Three point attempt way off the mark. That one flies high and wide. Sailor, good pass there as he gets triple teamed and we'll get a whistle here. I think that might have been a Milford timeout. I do believe so too. And hey, let's do it again. Why not? 42 38, 120 to go in the fourth. And welcome back to the final minute 20. Ball inbounded here. Sailor trying to get, gets punched out, and now taken back by Canton. Two on one break. Foster inside, gets two. Sailor up ahead to Frioli. Frioli trying to get to the bucket. He gets denied from behind by Harris. And it's been the same story. Harris just coming out of nowhere sometimes, making enormous defensive stops, blocking it, sending that one the back of the wall and back. Canton barely lost all year and they certainly don't want to add one tonight. They're playing like it right now. Team is desperate to get back into it. Only down by two though. Milford with the ball with under a minute to go. Sailor handles being watched by Varil. And those two points by Canton cutting that to a two point lead might hurt Milford. Inside White, it's a little too hard. Varil comes up with the rebound. And ball whacked from behind. I'm not sure what the call is here. I think they're gonna call that off. Still Milford ball. I think that might have been another block by Harris. 43 seconds to go, 42 to 40 to score here. This team's coming in well beneath their usual offensive output. Denial there, and ball still stays with Milford. Shot clock at 25. But I don't think they're gonna be able to run it down the way that Canton is pushing the tempo. Got a new shot clock off of that Frioli block. And now they have a chance to kind of kill a little bit of time. Sailor. Oh, and now 
Foul there. Burrell appealing his case, but referee not hearing it. He has not got the charge call all night. He had a blocking foul early in the fourth quarter that he was not approved of. And right there, that's going to be a little bit of a pain for Canton right there as that resets the shot clock yet again. Inbounds here tomorrow being crowded right at the line there. And brought in by Saylor. Saylor trying to drive in, trying to find Fraioli. Fraioli loses the ball, fighting for it. And it's Milford's ball. Oh, man. A timeout call from the floor with 30 seconds to go. Hey, let's take one more. We'll be right back here on Milford TV. Welcome back, 30 seconds to go, 30.9 to be exact, in a game that started off slowly, has now come to a frantic finish here. Inbound to tomorrow, a two-point lead for Milford as they look to continue to hold it. Aggressive defense there, and are we gonna get a call here? I think we're gonna see a foul on Barrill right there. Might be able to send Sailor for a one and one. I was getting worried that we might see another uh, travel there. Here's one of the things that you got to worry about when you're Milford. Last game, playing against Stoughton, tied the game off a of Cam Falcon three-pointer, making it 66-66. But Cam Andrews had a three-pointer at the buzzer, giving Stoughton the win, and hopefully that's not the case tonight. Milford holding on to a two-point lead as Ken's going to get the ball. And can't make the first one, so possession goes right back to Ken as they get the rebound. Foster driving inside. Can't get it, Everett get with the rebound. And the call, a jump ball. And they're giving that to Canton. Wow. That was a nice idea, keep both hands on the ball. Canton's gonna take a timeout. And we'll stay here for this one. That was a surprising call. I mean, Everett came down with a rebound and seemed pretty clear with Javi, but got trapped off by a defender. Foster was able to get in front of that. Take, and I, that was a very smart play, not able to commit the foul. Both hands on the ball, very clean. Gets the jump ball, gives Canton the possession. 13.3 seconds remaining on the clock, and now Canton's got all the drive. How do they want to finish this? Do they want to go for the win and hit a three-pointer there? Do they want to tie the game and try to win it in overtime? But it's going to be up to defense. One team's falling out with this game and all the more, who do you want to get the ball in the hands of if you're the Bulldogs? Foster's been obviously your most confident shooter tonight, but Harris has showed uh, what he can do from uh, three point range. Really the two most dangerous weapons tonight. You gotta figure it's gonna go to one of those two. Now Harris has been a little bit inconsistent from the three point line, but he's definitely been a threat down low. Foster is definitely the guy I'd be going for if you can't. And if I'm designing a play, I'd either hit Harris down low or try to find a jump shot for Foster. Oh, we'll see what they've got here. Varil on the inbound. Varil bounces in. Foster, three-point attempt with hands in his face. Draws a foul. And that was a four-on-one cluster right there. And oh, just a poor play for Milford. You can't have fouls like that. He'll go to the line for three and an opportunity to take the lead. Off of that possession, you can definitely see Milford went into panic mode. Maybe a little scared from the three-pointer against Stoughton. And all of this off of what I felt was a questionable call in terms of possession off of that rebound. Well, I think in any scenario, you never sent four guys to guard a three-pointer because if he misses like he did, now you got to worry about the offensive rebounds. Tie game. And this is going to be a heartbreaker if he hits this third one tomorrow, stepping in for Everett. Warburton's going to be taken out of the game as well. What a finish we have here. Yeah, it's definitely been an intense game from both teams. Both teams playing their hearts out. Foster's third attempt drills it. And we're going to see a timeout from Canton. Getting ice in that, that man's veins tonight, that young man. Helping pull his team and trying to will them to a victory here against a mismatch in Milford. So now you switch the game points, drilled up a play for 
Foster able to get to the three point line, change the lead, giving Canton the lead. Now you're in Milford's perspective. Exactly, how are they gonna be able to pull off and get a game winning play for themselves? 11.5 seconds on the clock. And will Canton continue to be so aggressive on defense? I mean, ever since they've made that switch, it's thrown Milford into a bit of a tizzy. Milford had a four point lead. Canton really stepped up under that two minute warning. Played their hearts out on defense, caused a couple of quick turnovers on Milford's standpoint. Trying to avoid back to back heartbreaking losses right now. And we'll see what this team's got here as White goes to inbound it. And take it out at the other end of the court. Here we go. Final 10 seconds, White looking for options. Oh, turned over. Ball oh, goes off of tomorrow's hands. He has to foul. And that might just wrap this one up for the Bulldogs. Well, I mean, never say never. Both these free throws go in. It's still a one possession game. Zach tomorrow having a couple of incomplete passes tipping off of his hands earlier in the second quarter. Knocked one out. A tough break there, and you can tell he. That's a little bit of a salt in the wound right there, for it, sure. It's on his mind at the moment as he tries to get past it. But it looks like he looked away just like a fraction of a second too quickly, and then next thing you know, the ball's off your fingertips. Foster's definitely close to that 20-point mark. If not, he's definitely surpassed it. Absolute ice tonight. And he misses that one. We have a two-point game heading back the other way. It's six seconds to go. Sailor. Gets over to Kelly. Kelly to the corner. White, his chance. He yeah. got it! Brendan White with the dagger. My God, the crowd has lost it. And what a shot by Brendan White. Milford is out of control. Point four on the clock, and that might do it. I think it's going to be back to back. Seaver's trying to calm down the team. White's going to be trying to take this free throw. What an unbelievable play for White. Quiet all night, and then coming up with the biggest shot of the night. A three-pointer to take the lead, and now a chance to add to that with a free throw in only .4 seconds to respond for the Bulldogs. Misses it, rebound to White, that's game. Milford comes up with a huge upset as they take down Canton, 45 to 44 tonight. And there's Bedlam on the court right now. Brendan White excited with his teammates in what was a seemingly unlikely victory for Milford has now come to fruition. That was a movie finish right there. Brendan White able to put that game winning. That was the dagger in Ken's heart giving Ken their third loss. And I don't think you could have any more perfect ending of that game. What an unbelievable finish and thrilled that I could have been here to take this one in. We'll come to a close on this one tonight. I want to thank Neil and Reeser for being alongside me and providing color commentary. And to Milford TV for having me as you get a good look at the team here. They are pumped and they are still alive for the tournament. Next game coming up against Foxborough and hopefully we'll see you for that one. Again, for Neelan, I am Patrick Garropy. This has been a presentation of Milford TV and we'll see you next time. Again, the final score, 45-44. Milford takes down Canton.